Yeah. I don't know what it was doing. I didn't even do it. All right. Everybody take a look at that. Now just actually take a look at that. What does this look like? What does this look like to anyone? What does this look like? When you see this, what do you what do you think? Oh. It's almost like he is giving himself um You know what? Let me change the dialogue. I would I would almost feel like the uh, the quote uh, the true <clears throat> excuse me the phrase the truth shall set you free, mm -hmm. and I think he's coming to that moment like I have no other I can't go left I can't go right, and I'm so. Um, Can you scroll down a little bit? Just a little bit, a little bit. Yeah, go ahead. Keep going. Yeah, I'm so. Um, Perfect. Oh wow. Yeah. See, I didn't see that part. That changes it. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. I have a bias, though, so. Go ahead. I see Catholic-ness, and I just go back to, like, the days when I was forced to go to church, and I didn't really feel it and belong. <laughs> okay. That's it. Okay. Anyone else? When you see this picture, what does that look like to you? A symbolism of I am all, bow down to me um, with the cloaks and regalia carefully covering up the deceit. Mm -hmm. and, what, and what would that deceit be? Well, for the inability to articulate it, it would simply be the opposite of what is being portrayed externally. Probably such darkness that you couldn't conceive of. Okay. Anyone else? When you see this picture, what is this? When you see it, what do you think? Uh, the first thing I think of is it looked like uh like Jesus on the cross. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Like symbolism of of that. Okay. Okay. So I could ask the same question for everybody that got on. We could go forever, right? It's like looking at a sometimes like looking at a painting. Everybody sees the same thing and has and it evokes right different emotions or thoughts and things like that. Well. So I would say for when I when I when I saw this, the first thing I thought to myself was trouble. This is just trouble. This is how things get started. This is how you this is how you went from knowing who you are to thinking that you're not who you are and thinking someone else is that someone else is. This is how you go from thinking that you are one thing and someone else is something else, that someone else is greater. And it's purposely made to be that way. You have people on the bottom carrying someone on the top and he is literally not offering himself as some kind of sacrifice or like Jesus, he wasn't walking on the water or putting turn the water into wine, not this cat, right? The, but people are literally carrying him like he is. This is the same thing. Do you know what this? Do you know what this is? Another version of a concert. You're on the bottom and you're looking up. They're on the stage and you're looking up. If you go to an opera, you'll realize it's the exact opposite. The opera is either eye level or looking down on based on your seats. 
you're not looking up. So the concert performer and this person are doing essentially the same thing. You're there to be an ooh and an ah while they perform. This is not personal. I'm not for or against anything in that sense. It's not my point. My point is, is that this is how people get lost. This is why people are lost. Because they now are made to believe that this person is something you're not or has something you don't. That this person is going to live longer than you somehow or came here different than you somehow or has some form of something in them that you don't. Look at the guy right by, if you look at the, the, the path, the, the Pope or standing there, look at the person right there by his left foot. Look what he's doing. What is that person doing? Looking up at him. They're doing what? Looking up at him. They're doing what? Looking up. Stop. That's what they're doing. They're looking up. We think that's just physical. But when you condition something long enough, it doesn't. it's not just physical anymore. It becomes mental and emotional. Why do you think you have the hardest? Look at look at the old Godfather movies and the old Scarface movies and everything else. Even they went to church, and when the Pope or the priest came by, they would kiss their hand. Hardest killers in the world kissing kissing somebody's hand, another adult's hand that they're not related to. That if they were outside this building, they might be shooting at. In another context. This is, this is how people get lost. And this is why so many people are lost. Now, do you know this same in 1939? Do you know this same church? Not necessarily this, but well, yeah, actually this person. But do you know this same church through Hitler's 50th birthday party? Anybody know that? Anyone? I didn't. Did anybody know the Catholic Church through Hitler's 50th birthday party? Did anybody know that on Hitler's 50th birthday, they flew the, the, the Catholic Church through uh, flew Nazi flags outside of the church? Did anybody know that? Hello? Is anybody here? It's news to me. It's news to most people. And that's the point. Is most people are doing just like that gentleman down there looking up. And they're looking up to people who are literally telling you, don't steal, don't kill. Give me your money. And while I'm out here endorsing someone who's doing the exact opposite. These same people through Hitler's 50th birthday party. Now, I'm not for or against either one of them. Neither one have anything to do with me. But the point is that, do you think most people know that? Do you think that person right there looking up knew that? And if you start young enough, they're conditioned not to care. We're conditioned not to care about. And so now we're literally looking up to another so-called human being as something different than that. And in order for us to do that, we must look at ourselves something different than who we truly are. Because if we're lying about him, the only way we can lie about him is if we're lying about or to ourselves. This picture is trouble. This is where everything, how everything and why everything gets started and remains. Because we end up, we end, we may start off like everyone just looking, and we may start off just standing around, but after a while, we become the people carrying this person, uplifting this person. Then we become the person standing right next to him looking up. And when we start looking up to people mentally and emotionally and psychologically and, and everything else, we don't see them for who they really are because we lose sight of who we really are. It's like closing your eyes saying, I can see better now. You've now lost all, you've lost all truth. You've lost all objective truth and reason. 
the same church through his 50th birthday party. Who knows what a Protestant is? What is a Protestant? Is it a type of uh, religion or a person that studies the type of religion? Yes. But what is it? Why a Protestant? Why not a Catholic? What's the difference between a Protestant and a Catholic? Or a Christian? What? Why a Protestant? Why did they name themselves Protestants? Is it because they believe in a specific component within the, uh, the Bible? There's a specific uh, area of study that they are focused on majority of the time? Okay. Well, in that word, the root word, essentially, in that root word is protest. Yes, you can, you can take it off. Protest. What they were protesting is, so give a little, little history. This is, this is, uh, this is one of those wake up, get up, the alarm is ringing and we're going straight out the gate. The reason, so in, in early, in the early 1900s, Germany had the second largest Catholic, Catholic population in the world. The first largest was Rome, right? Where the Vatican is first large. So, and the second largest population of Catholics on the planet was in Germany. Hitler was in Germany. Hitler was trying to get at the Jews, essentially. But in order for that to actually happen, the Catholic Church, because it was such a power in that part of the world at the time, had to sanction it. They had to turn their back. They had to become complicit. They didn't have to necessarily participate in doing it themselves, but they had to allow it. It's the only way it would have happened. So what was happening at the time was you had a lot of these Protestants. Protestants were people who were protesting. What they were protesting was the centralization of Catholicism. It means everyone having to bow down to one central figure or everything coming to one point or one head at the top, like a triangle. They wanted to be able, before they were able to practice Catholicism in their own way based on where they were. Everybody had their own way of doing it. But what 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 Catholics wanted in order to in order to be powerful, you had to consolidate power. They wanted to consolidate power. So what they did was they said, okay, look, we'll allow you to do these things to the Jews if you get these get these other these German people, these normal German people, so to speak, who aren't Jews or Germans who aren't Jews. We if you can get them to all roll up under us, we'll allow you to do what you want to do with the Jews and we'll just turn our back because you can't do this without our sanctioning. Because before they wouldn't sanction it. So Hitler, with the guy that you saw, basically they made a backdoor politic deal. And they said, look, I, Hitler said, look, I will, I will get all the Germans who are Catholics to roll up under you, to pledge their allegiance to you, and basically kill Protestant, Protestants, Protestant, Protestantism, essentially, the practice of, of decentralizing your worship. I'm over here doing my church. I'm over here doing my church. What they want to do is consolidate all those things and roll them up into one thing. That's That was the power of Catholicism. That's the power of it is that all of it rolls up unto, under Rome and in the Vatican and under Rome. So in order for that to happen, Hitler had to tell all these people who were Ca Germans, who were Catholics, okay, I want all of you guys to cut that out and we're all going to, you know, everybody's going to roll up under this one thing now. We're going to now centralize. Everything's going to roll up all onto this. So forgetting that, then he got the authority from the Catholic Church to basically they turn their back and say, whatever you do is on you. That's not our business, not our problem. So we got what we want. You get to do what you want. And they threw him his 50th birthday party. They flew Nazi flags on the on the church grounds for him for his 50th birthday party in 1939. They didn't attend it. They threw it. So now when you see a picture like that, can you pull it up one more time, please? When you see a picture like this, this is how things get started. This is how people get lost. This is how this is how this happens. Right? This is how we get to that. This is how we get to that. So now you have everyone carrying someone. You have someone looking straight up at someone. So you are you are essentially deifying someone who's alive. 
You are essentially worshiping someone who is alive. And people don't realize it because they've been conditioned from such a young age to believe in something. And now the, how do I want to say it? I don't want to say smart people, but I'll just say the crooked people who who knew that who know the truth of certain things said, well, shoot, we'll go, we'll, we'll get them to not worship something, we'll get them to worship us. I mean, why else are they carrying this person and he's standing there? My brother said, well, he's sub something to the effect of he, well, he's he's like the form of Jesus. This cat has never walked on the water, turned water into wine, told the winds and waves to sit down and be quiet, never healed anybody, anything, anytime, anywhere. And they are carrying him like he's who? Like he's who is that? And why is that? And why is he so strong that you, why is he so great that you can carry him, that you have to carry him? But if he got down, had to carry one of you or got in that line, the whole thing would go down. This is, this is how things get started. Master manipulators. That's what, that is what people who have found out what the things we talk about here are. They found the truth of things. They found out how the mind works. They found out what God is or is not, what the Bible is or is not. They found out what is true or is not. And so then to your point, as a result of them knowing the truth, they can manipulate it to people who don't know the truth because the people who don't know the truth don't know it's being manipulated or things are being redacted or things are not being told at all. They don't know that. But why is that? Because most of us, like, that's why in this class I make every, I don't make, but yeah, well, I'm going to say it that way. I make everyone participate because that otherwise you'll end up like that. You'll end up being told something. You do no research. You have no understanding of your own. You just take it and you look up to somebody who has done more research than you, but isn't necessarily telling you the truth, but you don't know. You haven't done enough research to know you're being lied to. So then every week you're carrying this person. Every week you're looking up to this person. Every week you're believing in what they say. And what does your life have to show for it? See, that's why one of the biggest reasons this class is free. Because most of us have gone our entire lives listening to a whole bunch of foolishness, giving our money to it, our time to it, our effort, our energy. We've done car washes, bake sales. We've been on church corners, I mean, on street corners, preaching the gospel. We've done, done whatever it is in, in any religious form that we're in, especially in religious forms that we're in. And what is it, what is it doing for us? Oh, yeah, maybe we think we're, we, we feel better. We feel like a good person, but how long does that last until your phone bill comes and you can't pay it? Until you're coughing and you can't get well? Until you're walking around and everybody you live with, you hate and hate you? Until every time you got to go to the doctor, they're looking at your blood pressure like it's a skyscraper? And what is all this doing for you? What is it getting? So we can argue about the validity of any behavior, but once the outcome comes, it doesn't matter. It's got, to, it's got to bear fruit. And whatever fruit is bearing is due to the seed that is producing the fruit. That picture is a prime example of how people get lost. Start believing that someone else is something and that you are not. That someone else is higher than you and you are not. That is the same elevation as people who go to a concert, look at artists. So when Jay-Z's up there talking about, Hova, what do you think you're saying? You're doing the same thing. All they're doing is sucking your energy. Isn't that what the walking dead want to do? Isn't that what they want to bite you for? Isn't that what Dracula wants to bite you for? They're after your blood. That's what the red carpet is, walking on the blood of the people. See, they're always looking for a way to elevate themselves over you. And you don't realize it. That's, what the, that's why when they say, I'm rolling out the red carpet, do they roll out the red carpet for the homeless? Do they roll out the red carpet for the middle class? Do they roll out the red carpet for anyone who's not famous? or powerful or as what, but the, but that person is powerful because there's people under that person lifting them up and holding them. Now, if they're walking like that on the air, well then, yeah, I'm all with it. I'll be standing there looking up. I'm ready. If that's what you, it, if you're doing it like that, oh, I'm, I'm all with it. I'm all with it. But if I have to hold you because you can't do this on your own, and then you look down at me and tell you, tell me you're better than me, and I'm holding you up, 
How does that work? Okay, let's switch positions and see if you can hold me up. That old man would have buckled boy like graham crackers and milk. <laughs> and you'd have been on your back and on top of his face. And you looking up to him because he got a he got a fancy jumpsuit on. He got a he got a jumper on. He got a romper on. That's that's this is not I'm I I am not for or against anything but the truth or a lie. I don't care which how you entered it whether it's through religion, whether it's through a fraternity, a sorority, whether it's through your gender, whether it's through your neighborhood or your education, I am only for the truth and against the lie. Because I i don't like telling the truth more than anybody else if, if I don't have to in a lot of ways, but the outcome is so, is, so, is so terrible if I don't, then I just do it anyway. Because I don't have to like telling the truth, but the outcome of not is worse than what I'd be trying to hide after a while. So I'll just, man, forget it. I'm just going to get it out the way. So my point is, it's not, it's, I don't care how you come into the lie or come into the truth. You're getting the outcome of whatever you come into. Right? That is essentially idolatry. So when everybody's sitting up there that Jay-Z concert, hove up, that's essentially what you're doing. It's not because of religion. It's, it's talking about you, you having a higher esteem of someone than you do your own self. It doesn't mean it doesn't mean you can't show people respect or reverence or congratulations because they uh, of an accomplishment or because they're really doing it. But that doesn't make them better than you. They just may be doing something better than you right now. They may have a good accomplishment or achievement, but that doesn't make them God and you something else. It doesn't make you that. That's not the truth. And when you start acting like that, when you start carrying people around and they're not paralyzed or in a wheelchair or incapable for some physical reason, when you just start carrying them around because you think they are something greater than yourself, you have, you are telling yourself a lie, you're wrong. And no matter how much you believe it or people are telling you that, it's not true and you're going to get the outcome of the falsehood. Not of your effort or your intention, but of the falsehood. That is idolatry. Worshipping anyone else besides yourself is idolatry. You should think of yourself that way, but not with people carrying you, but thinking of yourself in the highest form and fashion, that you are someone. That you, that you are someone, that you are it. You are him, you are her, you are that being. There is no one on this planet that is greater than you, not one. There may be people doing greater things than you, using more of their of who they are than you but you don't have anything less than anyone else and we've allowed people to put on an outfit and turn them into anything else now if you saw that person in the grocery store you wouldn't even give them a dollar but now they're in church and you gonna carry this cat all the way down the aisle and you know you'll you know you got a bad back you know your knee hurt you these cats wouldn't carry a, another man anywhere and they're carrying they're all carrying You'd be like, I don't know him for what? But if this person put on an outfit and now you're looking up. This person's on a stage and now you're looking up. It's not just the physical, it's the mental, emotional. It's the psychological. They're, they're literally putting themselves above you. Whether you know it or not, that's what it's for. I have all kind of friends that play professional sports, especially basketball. And they're nice to me because I know them. But I literally have walked, I've, I've literally been somewhere with people I knew playing basketball in a mall and a kid asking for an autograph with his jersey on and he said no. No. Like the like like it cost to move his hand. Like it cost to go like this. These are people, they're standing outside buying tickets, standing up, staying up all night past their bedtime to watch the game, crying when you lose. Man, the people in San Francisco out here who lost the Super Bowl, oh man, you should have saw how many TVs were out in the alleyway. Bullet holes in them, cracks all in them, people ripping them off the wall, throwing them up in the air, running cars over them, acting a stone fool because they lost. And yet not one of those people, if you saw them in the mall, will give you a hug, a handshake, or an autograph. They'd walk right by you like they were walking on top of them. Most of them. But my point is, is that, hey, you can like something. You can enjoy something. Don't worship or idolize things. We, make, we, I, we have too many gods. 
We worship and idolize everything. You have a business, the economy goes bad. You say, oh, shoot. Uh, you don't say shoot, but I'm going to use that because, you know, we got kids around, right? Uh, you say, oh, shoot, my business is going down. You just literally idolize the, the economy. Now the economy is greater than you. So now the economy is greater than you. This person that you're going to carry on Sunday is greater than you. Then now you got a cold. Oh, man, I think it's, it's flu. I can't get rid of it. Okay, now you got that greater than you. We have more gods than Egypt than Rome or Greece. We have, we have literally deified everything. And we wonder why we're confused. We don't know who to believe in, what to believe in, but the one thing we do, we know not to believe in is ourselves. The one thing we've been conditioned to not believe in is ourselves. The answer is never within. We're always looking without. Well, I wonder what Jay-Z got to say. I wonder what Oprah got to say. I wonder what this person got to say. I wonder what my pastor got to say. I wonder what the school got to say. I wonder what the news got to say. I wonder what the CDC got to say. I want every You wonder what everybody has to say and you got a problem and won't ask yourself. Won't sit down and think about, wait a minute, what do I really want here? And if it's my problem and it's my life, you mean to tell me I don't have anything to say about this? Or I don't have anything in me or around me or near me to, to, I don't, so if you have a problem and you can never solve it, you can never fix it, you can never participate in your own salvation, then what are, then how are you in control of your life? And if you're not, why are you still responsible for it, whether you are or not? Because truthfully, you are in control of your life, even if it's out of control. Just like if you're in your car, you are in control of your car, whether you're awake or asleep. The outcome of, of what you're doing behind that wheel is your fault. It is your responsibility. You are still, whether you awake or whether you fall asleep and run into a tree, it's still all your fault. It's all your responsibility, what you do well or what you don't do well. But we have been conditioned and trained to look up to a whole bunch of anything and everything, thinking it has a better answer, thinking it's greater than us, thinking it has some kind of magic or power that we don't. And we're believing in things and believing in people who either don't know more, don't care about you, don't think nothing about you, and you ripping your TV off the wall? You ripping your good TV off the wall? Are you, I mean, people burning jerseys, people running out in the street, screaming, running loose, over some people who don't care anything about you. Carrying somebody over people, uh, over carrying somebody don't care anything about you. Because if, if that person did, they would have never let you do that. Or they would have said, okay, my, okay, I'm going, you next. Either we all doing it or nobody's doing it. There's no one on the planet that has more God in them than you. That's who we all are. We all are the highest level of authority over our lives. Some people are aware of it. Some people aren't. Some people, are, some people aren't aware, but they're doing the right thing anyway. They're, 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 they're just, they just think a certain way about themselves without any just training or whatever else. And so that's what they're getting. But we're always getting the outcome of our dominant thoughts. And when our, our dominant thoughts is he's better, she's better, he's greater, she's greater, the economy or the weather or the news or Oprah, Harpo and Tyler Perry. And if, if you think everybody has an answer, you don't. Everybody is better than you. Everybody knows. You're just, you're just idolizing things. And those idols don't have ears. They don't have eyes. They don't have mouths. They cannot save you. Only you can do that. And any, and any person, that's why they never give you the information to let you know who you are. Because if you knew who you are, you wouldn't be carrying nobody like that unless that person was paralyzed and you were trying to get them from point A to point B. Otherwise, walk yourself. And if you're that cold, walk on the water then. Walk in the air. Go ahead, I'm gonna watch. Now, once you do that, oh, brother, whatever you want after that, I'm with it. What you want some time? I got you. You walking on the air, man. Show me how to do that. Do you have a plan for that? Do you have some kind of class? Is there something I can attend? Zoom in person. I need to come in person. I, where are you at? Where are you at? Antarctica? I'm on my way. I'm on my way. If, if, but otherwise, if you walk in just like me, why am I carrying you? Why are you looking up to somebody who's just like you? Why are you, why are we idolizing anything and everything? That, that is the trouble. That's the trouble we find ourselves in. 
is that all of our answers that we're looking for, we're always looking outside. But the people like that have conditioned us to do that while they're telling Hitler, go ahead, keep the party going. They go ahead and kill them all. As long as the remaining ones say they're with us, go ahead, kill them all. Matter of fact, you got a you got a flag, you have a uh you have a social media thing, I'll post it, I'll put it up on here. They flying the cat's flag. That was a social media at that time. They're flying the Nazi flags on the church. These are Catholics. They tell you don't steal and don't kill. And they're literally sanctioning somebody to do it. They were out there literally giving, like literally working with these people, all the soldiers on the front line. If you go back, let me do the research for yourself. All you guys on the internet long enough, you on your cell phones long enough, get on there and use the internet for something proper and good. Stop wasting your time on all kinds of other foolishness. Actually do some research and you'll find all the stuff is right there. I'm not going, this is just easy research. Google, anybody does research knows Google is not real research right? Because it can be manipulated and everything else. But once you know enough of everything else, you understand what's true and what's not because you have other sources. But this is not just what, what I just pulled up right now on Veronica's phone. This wasn't hard to find. It took me five seconds because I know what I'm looking for. It's on the same internet you have. So how many of you, how many of us actually do research on what we're taught and told? How many people do that? I don't, whether it's religious, whether it is what we're talking about today, whether it is, I don't care what it is. How many people, when you go somewhere and somebody's telling you something, a sermon, a seminar, a lecture, you actually go back and take and sit down and not only review what you were told, but then research what you were told. How many people do that by show of hands? It's okay, don't do that. I don't want anybody to embarrass themselves. It's okay. No, we're just taking what we're we're taking what we're given by people who are giving it and not thinking anything about or knowing anything about who the giver is. That person that everybody was holding up sanctioned Hitler to kill all the Jews in Germany. Well, I'll turn my back. Go ahead, man. Do your thing. Oh, you got that flag for your thing? Here, let me put that up too. And I'm a good Catholic. But your people out here killing everybody. But don't know that. But why not? That's the point. Is stop believing everything you hear just because someone told you. I don't care who it is. Do the research for yourself. Doesn't mean you don't believe it at all. Take 80% of it. Okay, I believe it enough. Yeah, I kind of believe that. It makes sense. But go out and make sure it's not 100% belief until you finish it off yourself. You be the, you stamp the approval before you start believing everything and believe in everyone. We cannot be indolent. Cannot be lazy. You can't be lazy with your learning. You'll never be free. A fool doesn't stay free long. And freedom requires effort. It, re it requires awareness and knowledge. And you can't do that with no information. And you can't get information, either all of it, either it being all correct. You can't get it without your participation. You have to participate. You have to participate in your own in your own experience. If you, you don't, you're not grown. Just stop saying that. If you're grown, you're not free. If you're grown and you don't have that information, you're not free. Stop thinking that. You don't need bars to be in jail, to be confined. Your ignorance will do that. It will limit you. Your ignorance, your lack of knowledge will limit you. Because you can't do what you don't know, not on purpose, not consistently. So anything that you're hearing from anyone, make sure you do the research. Make sure you go and that, and that internet that you have on your phone that you like being on all the time, that you spend all your time on social media, wasting your time. Actually use that same internet to do some research. Find out who this is or who that is or what really happened here or whatever else it is, you'll realize that 99% of what you know is not correct. About 99% of what you know. It's just not correct. Whether it's some of it, all of it, it's just generally not correct. But people don't have an obligation to tell you the truth. They, they don't have that obligation. You have an obligation to find out the truth because you are the one that has to live with it. And only the truth sets you and keeps you free 
That's it. And makes you free. That's it. Not your opinion, not your morals, not your ethics, not I'm a good person, not I go to church every, I'm a good Catholic. I, what is, I don't even know what a good Catholic is. What does that mean? I'm a good Christian. What does that mean? What is that? I don't know what that means. Anything that you are being told, anything that someone is telling you that you're seeing on the news, on the, whatever it is, make sure before you say, yeah, that's true, make sure you know it's true. Not because they told you, but because you actually did something to find out it's true. Make an effort to be free, not just the desire. Make an effort to be free, and you can't do that with no information. There's things like this all around people are doing this, carrying everything, carrying every everybody, and wonder why you don't have any energy for yourself, why you don't have any money after the concert, why your head hurts when you wake up the next day because you've been out all night hearing all kind of crazy music, and you wake up thinking you're going with the same idea and help. Listen to anybody and everybody, and all they're doing is manipulating you. They're manipulating you. The popes are, the priests are, the pastors are, they're manipulating you. The artists are, they're manipulating you. They got you burning up your TV, ripping your TV off the wall, buying all kinds of souvenirs. They got you spinning. The, I mean, there are people that we know don't have any money and literally out there with a new 49er jersey on with the tickets at the thing, at, spending all the money they just said two days ago they didn't have and posting it online like they're balling. And spend a hundred dollars on a 49er jersey and 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 the tickets and the free game stuff and the food and the gas and their time two days later on there before crying talking about they didn't have any money and they got a brand new niner jersey on for people who and all those players wouldn't even know you're there it's your job your life is your job it is yours to be on time for. It is yours to be prepared for. It is yours to be aware of and aware in. It's yours. You can't put the onus on everyone else to make your life better while you sit around. That's why in this class we participate. That's why I'm like, hello, hello, hell, whatever is going to get your attention, wake up. You don't get to come here and sit down and play around and just wait for it to be over and tell everybody you went somewhere. And my mindset is wonderful. And I'm just... No, you have to take this information and own it, research it, so that it become you become one with it, so that you know what you know. That's why I always show you where the stuff is from. That's why I always tell you what the words are and you go look them up. I show you, I tell you, I'm not sitting here telling you, believe me. Right? So this is important. This is important. This is your life. Own it. Pay attention to it. Focus on it. Your life, your money, your health, your arm, your body, your job. It's yours. It's going according to you. It's not separate from you. It's not different than you. So if you look outside of yourself, the first thing being your body, your body is the first thing that is not you. If you look at it and anything else outside of it and you don't like it, that's on you. And you have to change. Stop blaming everybody else, looking at everybody else, waiting for everybody else. It's on you. So if you can carry somebody down the aisle, you can carry yourself. You have all the power. You have everything necessary. You're just giving it away to everybody. You're giving it away to the 49ers. You're giving it away to Jay-Z. You're giving it away to the Pope. Giving it away to the priest. Giving it away to the, You're giving all of your power away in the belief that everything and everyone is greater than you. And it's not the case. If they were, if he was so great, he would need you to carry him. You volunteered to do that. I don't think the cat had a gun under his robe. <laughs> Talking about you, man, better hold this straight. <laughs> no, they on their smile. They can't. They think they're doing a noble duty. I just want us to understand. I want you to understand that who you're carrying needs you. So they can't be greater than you. There's no one greater than you. You're all equal in potential, just not in performance. And most of us are not performing because we're, we don't have good information. We don't have accurate information. Information is everything. Doesn't matter if you have a nuclear bomb, you don't know where to drop it. Information is everything. All right, everybody understand that? No alarm. 
Yeah, you just yeah, you warm yeah. now. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. This one is called, well, let me see. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it this way. All right. So I've had a, <laughs> had a couple conversations with some people this week and use this example. So I'm gonna use it again to prove a point. So if I've talked to you about this, keep your mouth closed. Thank you. All right. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you what you're doing right now that you're already doing something. And then I'm gonna show you how you can literally do the same thing you're doing and just move it over here and change your life. Okay, so let's say you go to the store and you wanna buy some honey for your tea. Say you wanna make some tea, like, no, I wanna have some tea. Oh, I wanna have some honey in it. So you go to the store and you go get some tea. So, I mean, some honey, I'm sorry. And so you walk over there to the shelf and you get the honey. And so now you put this, you put this, you put the honey in your basket. Now, somebody comes by your basket and takes it out. What do you say? What, what, what do you say? This participation time. What do you say? What would you say? Excuse me, you can't do that. Why not? Because that's my, that's my honey. I took it off the shelf and put it in my basket. Perfect. Now, somebody saw that happen. Now, now somebody else participate. Somebody saw that happen. And, and so the manager came over and you and that person who tried to do that were getting into it. The manager came over and somebody saw this all happen. So the person who saw it happen, the manager asked them, and now the person who saw it happen, what would they say? Oh, they took that, that honey out of her cart. Okay. And what's wrong with that? They could have went to Al whatever and got the honey themselves. Okay. But what's wrong with them taking it out of the basket? It didn't Once belong. You... It didn't. Okay. So belong. All right. All right. So everybody get that? Now watch this. So let me get this straight. So you're saying because you put it in the cart, it's yours. Okay. So now you put it in the cart, you walk around. Now you go to the checkout stand. Now you go to the checkout stand and you forgot your wallet or your purse in the car. Do you get to go... Do you get to take that honey with you? You got no. quiet. What? No, you don't. No, but you said it's yours. Temporary ownership until what do you mean temporary temporary ownership. What the heck does the that social, mean? The social, standard, <laughs> the social standard is that when you put something in your basket, you're gonna go and you have the intention of purchasing that item. So socially, it's acceptable that it's yours until you know, unless you don't have the money to pay for it. Okay, so look at the words we're using. Mine, belong, standard, intention. So let me get this straight. So if you take this honey out and you and it's in your basket and somebody took it out and you have no receipt, you can't leave the store without it, but you're gonna literally sit here and fight over it. That's what you're saying. And, and, and okay, and right, because it is a social standard and your intention is to buy it. And because it's a, a standard and your intention, you're now saying it belongs to you. So therefore it's mine. But literally you can't produce any proof that it's yours. You can produce proof that you have it and that it's in your cart, but you can't say it's yours because you can't leave the store with it. And you have no receipt. Bella put, you have to buy it first. So, but you have to buy it, okay. But you, everybody said and agree and I agree. That is mine. It belongs to me. That's the standard. That's the intention. So then, so then when we are saying all this, what is this all, what is this all based on? What is, what, what, what allows us to believe something without proof? We have no receipt. That's proof. It's an accepted it, norm. Okay. Okay. What is the word for belief without proof? Okay. Yes, that's one. What's another one? Faith, did they say faith? Yes. What's another one? Idea. Idea, okay. Or a concept, maybe. Okay. Decision. Decision. Say it again. Decision. Decision. Perception. Intention. Assumption. Assumption, hello. Assumption. It's an Yeah, Monique said assume. It's, you're assuming. This is mine. 
I took it off. It's mine. As soon as I grabbed it, it's mine. Somebody take it out, dig it in these hands. <laughs> Period. I'm just going low on you. Just, ah! That's it. I'm just WWF in here. WWE. I'm going off the top. I'm going right over the top of the salad dressing on you. <laughs> Straight up. Right? Okay, why? Well, you have no receipt. You can't leave. You have no proof this is yours except the possession. But in humanity, possessing something in your hand is reality. Enough for you to say, this is now mine. Okay. If you have, so you said idea. You said idea, decision, choice. Idea, decision, choice. Okay. Then what is the difference between, what is the difference between an idea and a choice. Who makes, who has ideas, who makes choices? What's the, what's the difference between an idea and a choice? Choice is a, a verb, right? Like you choose, when you choose to do something, it's the action involved in it, right? An idea is just something you think about. It's just mm -hmm. something in your mind, but a uh, choice is something you act on. Okay. All right. Okay. Anybody else? Well, the idea comes before you make the choice. Correct. So then who has ideas? We all do. Who are we? I Those am. Choices. I am. Otherwise referred to as God, universe, whatever else you want to call it. God has ideas. Humanity has choices. Because the idea comes before the choice. God comes before man, humanity, mankind. Idea always comes before the choice. You can't make a choice with no idea. So God always comes before mankind. Ideas always come before choices. What you call a choice, when you decided to put that honey in your hand, that was a choice. That was a decision. But that choice or decision can only be made because that honey was already available. That honey is nothing but the physical result of an idea. So when humanity says, I made a choice, when I put that honey in my hand, the possession of honey in my hand means it's now mine. It belongs to me. It is, this is the standard operating procedure, right? Based on my intention. This is how I get something. This is how it works in mankind. In God kind, right? When you are God of festing, as another uh, content creator I know says, as you are God of festing, meaning as you are manifesting, but as God, that is your idea. Your idea is the manifestation. Because God is not physical. It's consciousness. It's a spirit. It's consciousness. So, the, I, so it doesn't have to hold something in their hand. The idea is held in its mind, in its consciousness. It now says, this is mine. And how does it do that? By saying, I am rich. Just like you held honey. You and honey became one once you grabbed it. When you say, I am rich, you become one with rich or health or whatever else. You And you hold that idea in your mind like you hold that honey in your hand. And you don't let it go until you get out of the store and you get home and you put it in your teeth. You don't let go of it until the reason you held it is accomplished. You don't let go of the idea or the concept of yourself until that idea is accomplished or achieved. Now, has anybody ever heard me say an assumption, though false, if persisted in, will harden into fact? Has anybody ever heard me say that? Okay, if you put that honey in your basket as soon as you get in the store and you walk around because you get in a couple other things, if that honey is still in your basket, but you haven't, but you haven't used it yet, what word is that? An assumption, though false, if persisted in, will harden into fact. That honey's in your basket. You haven't used it. You're still shopping. What word is that? An assumption, though false, if persisted in, will harden into fact. What word is that? You walking around with Faith. that honey? Say it again. Listen Faith. to the... The, in this context, in this, okay. these words that I'm using, an assumption, though false, if persisted in, will harden into fact. 
What word is that, the honey that you're walking around the market with and that you haven't paid for yet? Is that in the word? Was that in the is that in the thing that I just said? No. An assumption, though false, if persisted in, will harden into fact. Um, George said expectation. Assumption? Nope. Marco Billy said idea. Nope. Fact. Listen. Listen to my words. An assumption, though false, if persisted in, will harden into fact. Persistence. 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 It means, don't you still have the honey in your possession? Even though you haven't got out of the store, even though you haven't even paid for it, you have not let that thing go because you have not used it for the reason you, you held it in the first place. Correct? So persistence and assumption. When you first decided that you wanted to get honey, that's an assumption. You don't have it, but you went, so now you went to get it. You went to the store and now you held it. So now, as long as you hold that honey, you have the ability to use it. But you have to now pay for it before you get out. Persistence is you holding that idea of yourself in your mind. Now, how? what is your currency? You use money to get out with the honey. How do you, what do you use if you are holding an idea or a concept of yourself in your mind? What do you use? Energy. What does that mean? Time, effort. Is that what you use to pay at the cash register? Essentially. They're taking time? Currency. Currency. You, you got to pay, right? So then what is your, what is your psychological payment? So we have your belief. Have, uh, Go ahead. We have faith, belief, and energy. Yes, your belief, your assumption, the acceptance that you already are that thing. Just like when you put that honey in your car, didn't you accept that that's yours? Aren't you willing to fight over it? I mean, you know, to some, not really, but aren't you willing to fight over it? Aren't you claiming it as your possession? Are you unclear? It does, is somebody, can somebody say that's not really yours? You just dreaming, get your head out of the clouds. Does, does anybody tell you that? And so what I'm saying to you is it's the same process. Your faith, your acceptance, I am this thing now. That is your currency. That's what allows that now to become real in your world. Because now you've paid it. Now you can start. Now you've paid for it. You can use it. Soon as you pay for it and they give you your change, you could pour that honey on the floor right there if you wanted to. Wouldn't be a good idea, but you could. It's yours. Nobody could say you stole it. You could use it any way you wanted at that point because you paid. If you, but you can't use it like that before you pay. You're not going to have the experience of the idea of you holding that concept of yourself until you pay. And your payment psychologically is the assumption or the acceptance that you already are this thing. You have now attached that idea in your mind of yourself like you attach that honey in your hand. You have no proof that it's yours, but you're not letting it go. You still said it belongs to me. It's mine. It's the standard. It's the intention. That concept you have of yourself of I am rich or I am wealthy or I am healthy or I'm a successful business owner. That's nothing but honey. It's nothing but a thing that you have to mentally possess by assuming that you are it now. That's all that honey is in your hand is an assumption. You can't prove it's yours. You have no receipt. You can't leave the thing with it, the store with it. All you have is it's in my hand. But that's enough. That's part of the socially accepted. Well, this is part of the psychologically accepted pattern. I go to the store and I grab the honey. As soon as I touch it, it's mine. Doesn't matter how long I walk around this store, I persist. I just walk around the store with the honey in my hand or in my car. It doesn't, doesn't change whether it's mine or not. 
The only thing that changes whether it's mine or not is if I give it back or if I pay. But it doesn't matter how long I hold it. As long as I don't give it up, I have it. As long as you don't give it the concept of who you want to be in your mind, you can have it. And you pay for it by accepting that you are that now. That You have no proof when you accept that. You have no proof about the honey in your hand either. You can't produce a receipt. You can't walk out the store with it. Yet you really, you really about to go full pastor mode, laying hands on everybody. Trying to take it out your hand. They might as well start calling you reverend so-and-so now. You're about to lay hands on everybody. <laughs> you become a reverend instantly. Because you now possess that. And you understand that. So my point to you is the same way that works physically is the same way it works psychologically. Is that psychologically, when you say, man, I'm poor, I'm looking, I'm like, shoot, this ain't working. Okay, you know what? I now, okay, I now I'm assuming I'm wealthy. As soon as I do that, that's like me grabbing the honey. But when I grab that honey, I have no receipt and I can't walk out of here. As soon as I, so that means I have no proof. When I have that conception of myself and I say, I am now that, I have no proof. I can't show you I'm that. But I am going to persist. I'm going to hold on to this and then I'm going to pay for it. And I'm going to hold on to it and pay for it. Once I pay for it by assuming and accepting I am and I hold that long enough in my mind, I will get a receipt. It means I will get physical proof of ownership. And this example, it's wealth. And another example, it could be a different career. It could be a better relationship. It could be whatever it is that you are taking off the shelf. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, Monique has a question. Yes. Said, in short, my currency to... Brother? Yeah, uh, who I am is my How are you feeling? Yes. 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 That's why it says in the book, according to your faith, be it unto you. According to your budget, be it unto you. Right? You can't go to the store with 50 bucks trying to buy 100 bucks worth of stuff. According to your faith, be it unto you. But faith is simply the psychological acceptance, the willingness to believe that you can have something, that, that it already exists. That's why you go to the store. Isn't that faith? When you go to the store, if you want that tea and you're sitting in your house and you say, I'm going to go to the store and get that honey, who has proof that the honey's there? When you're at your house, when you for, where you first start, who has proof that where you're going to get it is going to have it available? Does anybody have proof? That's faith. That's faith. You're willing to believe something because of what it will get you. It's the same thing. It's, just, it's literally the same thing. You have no proof that honey's there. You could have money. You could have a car. The store could be literally down the street, up the block. Doesn't matter how far or close it is. That doesn't make the honey there or not there. So you have no proof it's there before you start your journey. You have no proof that you can be this thing necessarily before you start your journey. But how will you ever know unless you go? How will you ever know unless you're willing to assume? You want somebody to prove to you that there's honey there before you got there. Who's going to do that? You have to be willing to take the journey. I want this honey enough that I'm going to get up and go get it. It's the same thing. I want to be this thing that I'm going to get up in my mind and move. I'm now going to go from I am not wealthy to I am wealthy. Or I am sick to I am healthy. I am going to move. I'm going to get up out of my house, out of the state I'm in, and move to another state. I'm going to get out of my house and go to the store. And now I'm going to take the honey in my hand. I'm going to get up out of my mind and say I'm, from, I'm poor to I am rich. And then I'm going to take wealth in my, I am rich in my hand. I'm wealthy in my hand and I'm going to hold it. And I wish somebody would try to tell me I wasn't. I wish somebody would try to get me to change my mind. I wish somebody would try to take this concept of myself away from me. They're going to get these hands. I'm not changing my mind until I use this honey that I got out of the house for in the first place. I'm not going to grab it and put it back on the shelf and then go home and think because I touched it, it's going to work. You can't think of yourself, oh, I'm rich. Oh, man, I see, my, I see my phone bill. I can't pay for it. Well, I guess that didn't work. Okay, you took the honey, then you put it back. Cool, you at least touched it. But that's not going to put it in your teeth. You have to hold it. 
and you have to hold it until you pay for it. And you pay for it by the acceptance that I am holding this thing. I'm holding this idea of my, in my mind of myself, whatever it is I'm being or doing or having, I'm holding that idea in my mind and I'm going to pay for it with the acceptance that it's already so. I have no proof that it's so. I have no receipt. But if I hold on to it, I will get a receipt. I will get proof because I have paid with the acceptance that I am this thing. Whether I am it or I have it, I be it, I do it, whatever it is. That is now mine. I am that thing. You're already doing it at the store. It's the same thing psychologically. It's the exact same. One, we're just used to doing. But that's why at the very beginning, when I give you the example, it starts to get tricky because you're like, well, I actually don't have the receipt. I can't prove it, but everybody knows it's mine. But that's all just conjecture. It's all just opinion. It's all just assumption. It's all, but it's socially accepted. And I'm telling you over here, it's the same thing. It's psychologically accepted. That when you want something, when you say, I am this, I want this, I'm going to grab this idea and I'm now going to hold it like this honey. And I am now going to, no matter how, what I do or how long it takes, if I'm around this store, there may be a line or I may do other shopping. I'm holding this concept of myself. And then when it's time, when I'm ready, I will now accept it. I, this is who I am. That is your payment. And then like anything, do you want a receipt? You'll get a receipt. You will literally get a receipt. You will see the physical expression of that in your life, of what you are assuming to be so. Not for 10 seconds, however long it takes for it to become real in your world. You keep it. However long, if you want honey, if there's a line like Black Friday, you stand there until you pay. You hold on to it until you pay for it, until you can get out of the store, until you get your receipt. You hold on to that concept of yourself until you get proof in your physical world. I have done it. I am doing it. And I will continue to do it until that which I've done is perfectly manifested in my world, until I get my receipt. I have held it, I am holding it, and I will continue to hold this honey until this honey I'm holding is, it has a receipt with it. The same thing you do in your hand is the same thing you do with your mind, with the concept of you being or doing or having something. You take that idea off the shelf. You apply the same thing here. This is socially accepted here in the psychological mind, in your consciousness. God holds things in mind. Humans hold things in hand. Then they say it's theirs. God holds things in mind and says it's mine. Just the idea that I accept is now mine. The thing that I hold is mine. Not the thing that I see. Not the idea that I know. The idea that I accept is mine. Not the honey I see, but the honey I hold is mine. You have to hold the idea of already being whatever it is you want. The I, not, not the, the idea as in the desire, but the fulfillment of it. I have the honey. I'm pouring this in my tea. The fulfillment of that idea. Yes. Question, Della. Yeah, you just gave me an idea. Um, see, like with me, right? Like I'm such a physical person not i mean what does that mean i'm such a if i see it i believe it type of person uh, you just gave me an idea like just maybe write the idea down and physically hold it mm -hmm. as you are trying to feed it to yourself i wanted to i mean i just got this idea right now but what do you think about that that's i mean I probably one, could... yes number one that's a great idea because it works for you and what wow. people call that, you have to find the thing that works for you. I'm giving you all a bunch of, I'm giving you the principle and the truth, but you have to find your own way to employ it, to apply it. Of the way mm -hmm. everybody that, every, Steph Curry is a, has great handles. So does Kyrie. They're completely different dribblers. They're both playing basketball at a very high level. The difference is that, the difference is the difference. And that difference is, the difference of who they are as people. It's a self-expression. When they're playing basketball, they play it differently. Even though they're playing the same game, they play it differently because it is a reflection of their difference. There's, it's, their self, it's a self-expression. 
the way you dribble, the way you shoot, the way you drive, everything you do is a form of your self-expression, even if you're doing the same thing as someone right next to you. So you have to find the best way for you to get that into you like, yeah, I believe that. Yeah, I can do that. So what you're talking about is some people call it journaling or scripting, right? They're just writing down the idea because it makes it real to them. Whatever makes it real to you. Some people journal or script. Some people imagine. Some people affirm. Some people say ask formations. Ask formations are statements in the form of a question. Like instead of saying, I'm so rich, you say to yourself, why am I so rich? Oh. Why am I so... Now, the reason people use ask formations is because ask formations are a question form. So you don't have to have proof in order to say it and get the momentum of feeling the outcome of that. Your conscious mind doesn't object because you're not making a statement of fact or proof. You're asking yourself a question like Google. It will then go around that little circle and come back with an answer. Your mind is designed to always prove to you that you are what you say you are. That's what the world is. Your mind looks at the world and says, okay, Della believes life is hard. What can What is around Della that will make life hard for him? Uh, he doesn't like traffic. Okay, cool. I'm going to make sure he gets out right on time, right in the middle of traffic. Or I'm going to give him the idea to turn right here and he's going to run right into a construction site. Right? Your physical world is your mind's grocery store. And it's always picking what you are believing yourself to be, the idea you're holding in hand. Right. So when you say an ask formation, an affirmation is something that you say, I am this. Well, a lot of times that's hard for people at the beginning because your bank account says you're not. And yeah. your mind will literally slap the hell out of you and say, what are you talking about? Get yourself together. Do you see your account? <laughs> right. What is wrong with you? Right. It's true. But an ask formation is a statement that you're making in the form of a question. So your mind now doesn't object to it. It goes to look for reasons why it's true. So when you say, why am I so wealthy? Well, how come, why, how come every time I write something down, it just comes to me so easy and quickly? Your mind is like Google now. It's looking around saying, well, why is that true? Come on, man, we got to find a reason because that's the law. That's the way it works. It's always proving to you what you believe yourself to be. And when you ask yourself a question, why do you think Google is the most popular, powerful search engine? Because everybody has questions. And the questions don't have a day, a date, a time, a gender, a, a place in the world. Everybody has them. And so you can go here and most likely get an answer or get some form of an answer. You don't have to tell anyone. You don't have to be embarrassed. You can go on 24-7, 365 on Google. That's why it's the most powerful search engine because everyone, Della, has questions. Everybody's looking for answers. So what happens is your mind works the same way as Google. When you start saying, why am I so wealthy? How come everybody loves to be around me? How come I'm always in such good health? Your mind starts to say, well, man, I didn't know that's what we're doing. Well, let's find out. And it'll start to bring, start to show you physical things in your world that reflects good health or the, the, or the answer to your question. So yes, whatever turns you on, whatever tunes you in, whatever taps you on, that's what you do. Some people script, some people journal, some people say ask formations, some people say affirmations, some people visualize. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter what you do. You have to take the information that you understand and then own it yourself, make it your own thing. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Of course. Thanks. Yes, sir. Okay. This, so do I could go on and on about this, but I don't, I'm going to move on to something else. Anybody have anything to say about the honey grocery store analogy in your mind? Did everybody understand that? Did everybody get that? It's funny because I'm at the grocery store, Coach Lucky, and I, I just, <laughs> I feel, um, I feel more responsible listening to what you're saying. It's like, I feel more responsible for my life choices. Every week, I feel more responsible for my life choices. And then I choose to fall off and move like a human sometimes. I forget my ability to move like a God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm just, it's, it's, I'm resonating, especially. Yes. Yeah. Don't, and don't you feel like a God when you're in the grocery store getting to pick what you want? Right. Compared to when you were five years old, didn't you feel real human? Right. When right. you're like, mom, dad, and they're like, no, nah, no, nope, can't buy it, can't afford it, ain't buying it, don't want it. No, you already had that yesterday. That's that is that is our humanity. 
when we want something and we and we are boxed in. That's why I always say you don't have to be in jail to be behind bars, to be imprisoned, you to, to be not free. You could just have a desire and your mind is giving you the middle finger. No, I want to be wealthy. No, I want to pay my bill. No, you ain't got it. Don't have it. Can't ever get it because you ain't never had it or whatever else it may be. So yes, when you go in that grocery store as an adult or as someone of age and you can buy whatever you want, that is a God. And when you can do the same thing in your mind, that's who you really are. To act like something else is why it's so painful. To act like you can't have it. To act like you won't ever get it. To act like it's impossible. You, it is, that's like going from being our age to acting like a five-year-old. Everybody's like, what is wrong with you? Stop acting like a baby. Because you're not a baby, you're just acting. We're not human, we're just acting. Yes. So, George Denronette. Yes. Hi. Hey. That's like oh, um, when you put something in your um cart and you have no intention of buying it and you know you're not gonna get it. Like I went to a, a class, I already said in my mind I'm not gonna buy the package. I know that. I just I just want to get all the information I can and I know I wasn't gonna get the one on one training. It wasn't even that much, but I already knew I wasn't gonna do it. Mm -hmm. So that's like putting something in your cart and you know when you get to the register you're gonna put it back. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you have to watch what you say and what you think. So mm -hmm. I get it, or I'm mm -hmm. getting it. Mm -hmm. Because when you go home without that thing, then if you're in your right mind, you're not mad. You're insane no. if you put it back and then get to the house talking about where is it? <laughs> Everybody's going to be like, mom, I just saw you, or honey, I just saw you, or whomever says, I just saw you put it back on the shelf. I asked you, and you said, I don't feel like buying that. Now you're at home throwing a temper tantrum. That's what everybody, that's what we do. We have a desire in our heart. Then we say, we, we, then we pick it up. Then we say, oh, I ain't never had it. Oh, well, everybody tells me you can't do that. And so we put the desire back. We put the idea back. And then we, then we go on the next day and then throw a temper tantrum about not having that th same thing we just put back. Yes, George. Yeah. Um... I don't know if this is a little left field, but to go along with what you were saying about the uh, the cart and the situation where the person pulled it out your cart, mm -hmm. and it kind of reminded me of how you started out the class where you were talking about you know they had the God they had to do it up there acting like he you know he's above everyone. <laughs> so who was the wit the witness that saw it go down? The witness is like the 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 jury and the and the execution. You know what I mean? The, the manager asked for the jury mm -hmm. to come and give his give his uh, input. Mm -hmm. but the jury could have been on the other person. The person it could have been a black white thing. And the person like he didn't take that out his car. He already had it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like right there you had put the the witness. It could have been a false witness, and you put it up on a, on an idol and say your your uh your uh recollection of this event is what we're gonna hold as facts. So we're not gonna say you know who who are you? You know what I'm saying? You don't have to. So it's kind of like you know letting people uh, tell you about uh, what you're doing. And you know, I, I don't know. That's just what what kind of like got in my head when you were saying that, and then, then you know how you put it about the uh, about having faith. But like you say, um, you have to have faith in something, even no matter even if you don't have any witnesses for your faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why I was telling telling all of us a couple of weeks ago, take what I'm saying and not just what I'm saying, but what does it make you think? You'll start to see that when you're listening, you, everybody starts to get different things from what I'm saying because it's personal and relevant to you. What is what I'm saying? How does it make you think? What does it make you think about? That's what the truth does is it lets you, it, it's like a key. It starts providing freedom. And then you start looking around your life and you'll start to see where you're locked out. You start to see where you don't have a key. You start to see where you're not free. Then you start taking this key and you start saying, oh yeah, I'm going over here first. It's like winning a lottery, right? If you won a lottery, you'd, you'd immediately start saying, oh yeah, this is what I'm gonna buy or this is what I'm gonna pay off because now you have the means to do something and you're acutely aware of where you felt like you didn't have the means two minutes ago. That's what all this information is for. It's for all of us to take as individuals and in our individual lives and say, oh, this is what that means to me. I know what he said, but this is what it means to me. I know what he just said, but I now could take it and apply it to this, or I can apply it to that. Oh, so I should write more things on a card for myself. Or, oh, I shouldn't let everybody tell me, take things out of my cart. Or, oh, I have to be more responsible when I'm in a grocery store because I realize in this grocery store, I'm God, I'm grown. 
So I get to pick whatever I want. And that grocery store is just like life. That is exactly what I want all of you to do is what you're doing today. It's taking what we talk about and applying it to you, to your life and your world so you can see where you're free and where you're not. Why you're free and why you're not. What you're worshiping and idolizing and what you're lifting up. It could be a person. It could be the economy. It could be the weather. It could be a relationship. It could be your job. You may be worshiping some things you shouldn't be. You may be putting something above you or someone above you and you shouldn't. And all it's going to do is cause a backache, knee pains. All your, and that person is never, do you think that person got off? Do you think that person, that picture got off and shook everybody's hand and said, thank you, man. You sure were strong. <laughs> you think, do you think that person even said thank you? Do you think that person knew everyone's name who was carrying him? Do you think they care? Well, what's in between him and the 49ers? And Steph Curry and all these other things that people worship and idolize, Oprah and celebrities and politicians. We, we're carrying people. And, then, and worshiping them like they're stronger than us and they're riding on our strength. Then we put them down, walk away, exhausted. They never say, thank you, don't know your name. And they're where they are and you too exhausted to get to where you want to be now. Not the way it's supposed to work. That's trouble. Not the way it's supposed to work. All right. George says, don't say Beyonce. Hey, man. <laughs> hey, man, beehive and get your jumps. You mess around and get threatened. <laughs> All right. All right. What is, okay. Is anybody, you can just have a show of hands on the screen. Has anybody had, has anybody had an idea? You were just sitting there and an idea just came to you. Anybody? Okay. What did you do for that idea? Like, who did you pay? How many push-ups did you do? What did you do for that idea? Like, who do you know? What school did you go to? Like, what neighborhood did you live? Like, do you have good internet? Like, where did, like, were you in a good area for reception? What did you do for that idea? Anybody? George said, uh, think, um, delicate observation of life. Okay. But the idea just came to you. So what did you do for it? I had the nutsack, excuse my language, y'all, it's not feminine. I had the balls to believe that I could be creative enough to think for myself. And But if it just came to you, you didn't create anything. Um, so I was in my, my, my influence, you know, what I, what I subscribe to on a daily basis influences my creativity. Okay, go ahead. Um, Coach Monique said they just becoming I didn't I did nothing oh. Bella said just be um George says activated my mind I'm not sure what that means Mo he put nutsack I don't know what that means so if 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 you can get an idea anywhere okay what is a what is a dream A different dimension. A belief. <laughs> a belief. Okay. Uh, Sparkle Betty said a message. Okay. So then, who is who is the messenger? I am. Okay. So then, where does a, so then where does a dream come from? In you. From deep inside. Yeah. Okay. In you. I am. In you. Can you see? I am. Can anybody see? I am. I mean, so, you can see it in the physical form. Which is who? Which is me. Uh, correct. My outer, correct. Yeah. So you, but you can't see I am, correct? You can only see his representative, his representation called you, right? Called Johnny, called Monique, called Della, called George, right? You can only see his representative. You can't see I am. Right? So... An idea came from I am. Right? An idea, so a dream is just, is a, a dream is, I, is an idea just when you're asleep. 
It's just a message when you're asleep. It's just a commercial when you're asleep. What is the difference between an idea and a commercial? One's external, one's internal. Essentially. Essentially, an idea is something that is created from I am within you. A commercial is something that's created externally to you or for you, potentially, right? Externally, a commercial is external, right? An idea is internal. What is the difference between the two after that? What are they designed to do? Influence you. So what's the difference between the two? At the end what of the day, spoken? what the di Say it again. Spoken? What is spoken or words and other just a thought? Okay. One is meant to influence you and the other one is meant to inspire you maybe? Yeah, but but okay, even if it's meant to inspire you, what is inspiration meant to do? Get you to move in a certain way, but both so, of them do that. So, so what's the word that you use for the other one? Influence. What does God make you do? What does a commercial make you do? Act in a desired manner. It does. So the, the did the commercial come outside the TV and put a gun to your head and make you buy it? Oh, it goes off of your emotions. It, it, it moves you emotionally. What is it? We're complicating it. Okay. What what is it? It's designed to influence you. An idea and a commercial are both designed to influence you to get you to do something. Does a does an idea make you do it? Does a commercial make you buy whatever they're selling? No. They're both designed to influence you to move, to do something, right? Okay, so your idea, you didn't do, it came to you. You didn't do anything for it. When you were sitting at home on the couch, let me think of this way. If you were sitting at home on the couch and you were watching commercials, what if you actually had to, every commercial that came on TV, what if you had to buy it? What if you had to buy everything you saw? What would you do with that TV? Turn it off. Anybody, what would you do? Throw it out. Throw it out the window. I think they would like the San Francisco fans. <laughs> right? You throw that thing quick. You'd be pulling the plug. You'd be throwing out, you'd break your window, break the, you'd be trying to get that thing off you so fast you wouldn't know what happened, right? Because you're like, man, if I just got to do whatever I got to do just because I saw it, this ain't going to work, right? So my point then is that the reason we're willing to watch commercials is because we know at best all it can do is influence. It can't make us do anything. An idea is just like a commercial. There's no difference. It's there as something that is being proposed to you that you don't have to do, but it's being proposed to you. Okay, now that commercial product, let's just say it is for a Cadillac. Let's say it's for a Cadillac. Now, the I, the commercial said it's for a Cadillac, and you said you want it. Oh, uh, you know what? I like that Cadillac. I think I'm going to get that. Okay. Then now, what do you have to do to get the Cadillac? Get go get it. Okay. Figure out what is needed to go get it. So you So you went, okay, go get it. Figure out how to go get it. What didn't you say? Oh, it is mine. Nope. What didn't you say? Think about what you, okay, it's, yeah, it's mine. Okay, because you're going to go get it. You didn't go strip the firm. Okay. And what else didn't you do? Think about, think about it. What didn't you do? You're going to get a Cadillac. You're saying, I'm going to go get it. I'm going to, you know, what, what didn't you do? What didn't you do? You're getting a Cadillac, but what didn't you do? You're going to go get it. What didn't you do? You didn't buy it yet. Okay. Who else? Didn't, I didn't say, oh, man, I wish I could have that. Okay. Anybody else? One more. Oh, 
oh, I want you, I want you guys to get it. Because I want you to understand how this works. One more. What didn't you do? In this equation of getting the Cadillac, of getting this thing, what didn't you do? You didn't buy it yet. Okay. You didn't buy it yet. Okay. So in the interest of time, Can you question it? who built the Cadillac? The Cadillac people. Okay. Was it you? No. Did you put the Cadillac together? Go make it. Did you go make the Cadillac? No. All you had to do was buy the Cadillac. Is that correct? Yeah. So what is the difference between a Cadillac and when you have the idea, because the Cadillac came from the commercial, right? If you have an idea of wealth, that idea is the same thing as a Cadillac. So then what do you have to do to get the wealth? Get off the couch. Okay, <laughs> but remember wealth, can you, okay, where does, where does wealth live at? Like what's the address? <laughs> what is what when you're walking down the street what is what does wealth look like is it like uh what is wealth it look is like? secretive. it's it's invisible because it's a it is a consciousness consciousness does things different than the physical even it has its own process but they're similar on a, on a cadillac you have to get out of the house and go get it but you didn't have to put the cadillac together anybody anybody buy a cadillac in pieces no <laughs> And then bring it all home, put it together on your lawn. <laughs> Anybody? Yeah, it sounds silly when I put it in this context, right? Because you wouldn't do that. But what I'm saying is, it's just as silly to think that you're going to grind and get wealth, that you're going to put something together. The idea of wealth came to you. All you have to do in consciousness is accept that you are. And just like that idea came, the way to express that idea comes with it. You don't have to build the wealth. All you have to do is accept it and assume you are that. And the idea has its own way of producing itself, but it needs your acceptance. You have to get up. You have to go get it by assuming you are it. Wealth is invisible. Success is invisible. You can only see the expression of it. And the people who are wealthy, the people who are successful, the people who are healthy have a consciousness of being that. Therefore, the idea and the outcome, like we talked about several weeks ago, the two pack of muffins, they're the same. When you buy one pack of muffin at Costco, you have to take the other one with you. Like we talked about, there's no option because you're going to mess up their count. It's the same thing. When you have an idea, an outcome automatically comes with the idea. You don't build the idea. The idea came to you. Just like the Cadillac comes to you whole and in one entire complete car, the idea is an entire complete thing. You don't have to build the idea. It already came to you. It's already done, just like the Cadillac is done. You don't go buy a Cadillac in pieces and put it together. You're not putting together the idea of wealth. You're only accepting it. You're going to get it. And consciousness, that means assuming you are it. That is the purchase. Then you will see the wealth express itself in your life because you now are wealthy. You can't want a Cadillac from the couch and sit at home. You have to go to the dealership. You can't want wealth and keep it separate from you by being unwilling to say or accept or assume that you have it. That is how you psychologically possess something. And just like I think Karen said a while back, the... the I idea came before the thing. The Cadillac is the thing. Before a Cadillac became a thing, they had to have an idea. But an idea you can't see. You can only see the expression of it. Now I know what you were thinking because you built a Cadillac. When that commercial came to you, did you did you do, if, if that was the first time you saw a Cadillac, when that commercial came, what involvement did you have in making that Cadillac? Right? What involvement did you have? Participate. Wake up. What involvement did you have in making that Cadillac? None. None. Did that stop you from seeing the commercial? Did it stop them from building the commercial? So that the Cadillac people don't need you. Not for the not for the production or the manufacturing. They just need you as the as the buyer. Your idea came to you just like the Cadillac. It was already manufactured and produced without you. That's why when the idea came to you, you could know what you wanted. 
You're like, oh, I have an idea to be this. The idea came to you whole. It, the, it was already produced and manufactured. It doesn't need you. All it needs you to do is buy it. There's no difference between wealth and a Cadillac. The idea of wealth is a full, complete thing. That's why you can name it. That's why you can say, I want to be, because you can see it. When you drive down the street and you see a dealership, you're like, oh, I want that. Because you can see it. You're not pointing in the sky in the middle of nowhere. You're pointing at something particular because you can see it. The Cadillac, when they, they play that commercial because they know you don't know this is available. And if they don't play a commercial, how are you going to know? Your, your, your God mind knows your human mind doesn't know that this is available. So it's got to give you the idea to turn your human mind on to make it aware so that you can go buy it. You can go buy it in your mind by assuming you are wealthy or whatever it is you want to be or have. I am wealthy or I have a wonderful job that I love that pays me more than I could ever even imagine. And everybody there loves me and I love going every day. That's buying a Cadillac. That is how God operates. Everything is mental and then it expresses itself physically. The Mental always is before the physical. There is no option. There is no, I'm black or I'm trying hard or I'm a good person. You don't get to change the order of operations. It's just like math. Yes, I see the question. Hold on one second. It's just like math. It's the order of operations. Everything physical is first mental. Everything. There are no exceptions. So they play that commercial to get you, to make you aware that there's something that they would like you to or like you to buy or want to see if you're interested in. That idea is a psychological commercial. And it's already, the Cadillac, the Cadillac is already complete. They're not, it's not in pieces when you go to the lot. The idea is, in, is complete. And all it's not in pieces when you say, I accept that I am that. And just like you didn't have to build the Cadillac, you don't have to build your wealth. It's already a complete thing. But when you accept that I am wealthy, not I'm going to be wealthy, I'm trying to be wealthy. If I get three jobs, what did you do to buy the Cadillac? You just brought them the money. You didn't say, well, if if they, you just brought the money. You just did your part. That's it. You're not a producer. You're not a manufacturer. The Cadillac is done. You're not a producer. You're not a manufacturer. Creation is done. Creation is finished. The idea in your mind is a commercial. It is a psychological commercial to let you know that something is here. And all you have to do to buy it is to accept that thing. Yes, I accept that. I accept that I have that. I accept that I do that or that I'm doing that or whatever. That's the honey in my hand. I am now going to keep this acceptance or this idea that it's mine. I am keeping it until I get a receipt, meaning until I see a physical thing in my world, until it hardens in the fact. You don't have to build wealth. Wealth is a consciousness that you have to be willing to, to assume and accept that you are it before you'll ever see it. So to Della's point, if you have to see it before you believe it, you'll never get anything, ever. Because there's nothing ever seen that you had to believe. You wouldn't have to believe it because you see it. You got a pen in your hand. Do you have to believe that? No, you have to believe that you can create the pen that'll be in your hand that you see in your mind first. Everything in your hand was first in your mind. No exceptions, no exemptions, no blackout days. There's no loophole. It ain't like that. It doesn't work like that. That's the way it works. So you have to assume wealth. I am wealthy. I don't care what my pocketbook says, my wallet, my purse, my account. I am going to hold that on and hold it in my mind, just like that syrup. I don't have no receipt, but I said it's mine. I said it belongs to me. I'm going to lay some hands on it, over it. You hold it in your mind with the assumption and the acceptance that it is it, that that is yours, that that, that is who you are. It is complete. You're not assembling anything. Wealth is complete. And when you assume yourself to be that, that is how you will see that. That's the receipt. You will now see that become physical in your world. Right? Okay, question. Coach Lucky, what do you say? You say assume a lot. Assume this about yourself. Assume this already yes. is, is, is reality. What do you yes. say to people who use that, that tacky terminology of you know how like it's like all these slick sayings out here that people just repeat without even like really studying like you were saying earlier people just repeat stuff without actually studying what they were taught yes. when it comes to the the the, the term uh assume make an ass out of you or me or whatever it's called mm -hmm. but however it goes what do mm -hmm. you say to that based on what you're saying 
-hmm. how do you acknowledge somebody who approaches you with that type of rebuttal? That's like somebody saying to you, I'm sorry, but you know they're not. That's like when somebody says, oh, assume makes you, no, when somebody's using assumption in that term, somebody's saying, oh, well, I just assumed, no, they just didn't do what they were supposed to do, and they just hoped that you were going to do it, and said they assumed that you were going to do it. They're using assume in the sense of a way to get out of something, a, a way to get out of responsibility. They want to throw it on you, or they wanted to act like, oh, they thought there was going to be some other way than what they knew, because they didn't want to do what they knew, or they didn't do what they should have. That's not the same form of assumption. Just like when somebody steps on your leg and you know they're not sorry, but they know they have to say sorry, but they said it, but they don't really mean that. That's not really an apology. It's the same thing. They're using assumption. That's a perverted form of assumption. That's not actual assumption, right? When I say assumption, I'm talking about the same way God does it. Meaning when, I, when God said, let there be light, God had to know what light was in order to know that it got what it wanted. Right. There had to be some idea and concept in its mind of that thing. Right. And it had to know that it could do it. But it had no proof of light when it said it. Because what is it? An assumption is a belief without proof. It's a it is something, but you can prove it. You can you ultimately, if you stick with it, will prove it. Those are those are the same words are being used, but they're two different intentions, two different levels of awareness, two different levels of knowledge and information. They're, they're not the same. They're the same word, but they're not the same thing. Thank you. Everything's yes. created twice. Everything's created once. It is assembled the second time. It's created first in mind. There's only one creator and only one place things are created. There's only one creator, God. God is in you as your consciousness in this physical form because God is not a human. It's not a body. It's not a man or a woman. It is a consciousness. It's a spirit. It's a consciousness. So everything is created there in consciousness and it is expressed. It is assembled physically. That's why you assemble the idea you have in your mind. It's like Legos. You're putting together the vision you have, right? There's only one creator and only one place things are created. That's it. It's assembled with your body. Your body assembles things. It puts them together, but it, but it didn't create the idea. The idea came to you from your higher self to your humanity, to your human mind. And then your human mind uses your hands to put it together, to assemble it. But your body's not a living thing. It's made alive by a living thing. So your body's not creative. It's only expressive. So to Della's point, if you have to see it before you believe it, what? how, how did the mafia build Vegas? When they went to Vegas, it was nothing but dirt. You go to Vegas now, it's still nothing but dirt. There's a lot of dirt covered up, but it's still dirt. There's a lot, of, a lot of casinos and homes now, but it's still dirt. It's still the desert. So when they went out there and they looked around, if they had to see Vegas before they built it, they would have just turned around or, or quit. It would have already either been built or they would have quit. It's sight is human. Vision is God. Vision is your consciousness, ability, and awareness to see something which humanity would say does not exist but everything exists in mind before it's expressed in hand. Vision, that's why it says in the book, my people perish for a lack of vision, not sight. Sight is a human ability. Vision is a God ability. It's to see something in your mind that you now can create, that you now can produce physically, that you can bring into the physical world. But the physical world is just where I see it. It's not where it is created. It's where it is expressed. It's not where it's experienced. There's always an order. Vision comes before sight. Just like your, your, your windshield doesn't see, you see through it. Your eyes don't see, you see through them. They are, they're just the thing you use. They are not the thing itself. Sight is what you're using. Vision is what it is. Vision always comes before sight. Yes. Marco Bailey wanted to know, who taught you all of this, Coach? Where did you study what you teach? Oh. I answered that you study daily because I see it. <laughs> uh, uh, you know how you love something? And for me, one of the first loves I had was soccer, and then it was basketball, and then it was trying to figure out why things are the way they are. That's why I said I'm not for or against being this or being that, I'm just for the truth or the lie. And I try to figure out why my life, uh, I thought I was a good person, decently, mildly. I didn't say I was Jesus or no, no, you know, whatever, or an angel, but 
I thought I was a decent person, but it didn't really matter because my life didn't feel all that decent. And I try to figure out why is this person's life better than mine? Are they better than me? Do they have more than me? I just want the truth because everything I had up to that point didn't matter. It wasn't producing anything. And so I just said, well, shoot, I want to know. And so I started, you know, and what does it say? When the, when the student's ready, the teacher will appear. When you become conscious of wanting to be something, you, your, your mind will lead you to all the information that already exists. And so when I became conscious of wanting a better life and wanting to figure out how life really works, that's my passion. I want to know why it works. I want to, like, I got good in basketball where I could control my behavior where I was nice. I was good in soccer. I was good in judo where I knew that I could come out here and I could perform. It wasn't luck. It wasn't hope. It wasn't wishing. I wanted to feel that way about life. And so I started looking for information where I could start living life like I played basketball, like I played soccer, like I did judo. I wanted to know like that I could come out here and perform. That it wasn't like gambling. It wasn't. It wasn't rolling the dice. It wasn't one day I'm up and one day I'm down. I'm still learning how to do it. This is a never-ending process. Basketball's ended. Judo's ended. Soccer's ended. But life hasn't. So what we're learning here every day is a lifestyle. That's why I say it's not a sermon. It's not a seminar. It's not some kind of weekend thing where you pump yourself up for two hours and then go live miserably for the remainder of the 22 hours and the other six days a week. No, this is something. That's why I I implore you all to apply what we're saying every day to your life, to everything, to your bills, to your health. This is because it's not that you're not already. Our goal is to do it consciously. So to answer your question, I just wanted to, I wanted to live more skillfully. I wanted to live more wisely. I wanted to win and feel like I knew how to win and that I could actually, it started to make sense to me. So as I started to learn and learn and learn and learn more, I got led to different things and, and I little this, little this, little that, little this, and I'm still learning every day, right? And so some of the questions I asked you guys, did you know this word? I didn't know it either. Right. Did you know this person did this? I didn't know that either. Right. So I try to tell you things to spur that learning and that curiosity, because whatever you're searching for, you'll find because you are the power that knows everything. Right. But if you don't go searching for your jacket in your closet, it'll be there and you just won't have it. But it's already there. Right. So it just I wanted to live a better life and I wanted to live it with some skill. I wanted to know if that was if that was possible, if I could li really literally be nice in life like I was in basketball. I wanted to learn. I wanted to, because for me, when I played basketball, I loved it so much. I practiced all the time. I wasn't good when I first started, but I loved it so much. I practiced all the time and I became good, but it was because I loved it so much. And that's how I feel about this. This is the first thing I felt that way about as far as wanting to be something, right? And I wanted to be good at life. And so I'm learning how to do that. And the more I do it, I'm like, oh, this is nice. It feels good to be good and smart and this. Okay, well, what else can I learn? And it's kind of like that. Hopefully that answers the question. I didn't ask for myself. I asked for those who didn't have the courage to ask. I asked for those who challenge me on a regular basis about where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you help me to remember. Sometimes I just give up on people. Coach Lucky, like, I don't feel like being slow with you. Like, I don't want to be slow with you. I want to, you know, like things that just make sense. They make sense. Mm -hmm. uh, formulas that work, they just work. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people want proof right in their faces and they need to see like what the church does they need to see a group of people come together and agree and uh, it's just it gets frustrating so you I tell you every week you're my inspiration because I'm learning how to answer those types of questions I'm, I'm learning how to take the, the hat off where it's viewed as disrespect to question the person who's teaching you I'm, t I'm, I'm stepping out of that space so I didn't really ask for myself I what you're t what you're teaching me is they're reminders. Mm -hmm. These are things that I'm already aware of. I just appreciate the reminders. For someone else that may have never heard this information before, they may want to know, but they don't want to be viewed as being disrespectful or they don't want to, you know, come out of their shell. And so I'm asking questions on behalf of those people who deserve to know the source of all this information because it's great information, but, you know, some people just have questions. So I'm asking on their behalf. Mm -hmm. Well, hey, I respect that and I appreciate that. And I always say, that's why I always stop and say, hey, do you guys understand? Hey, do you get it? Do you this or do you that? Or if I pull something up on the screen or if I, you know, whatever else it is, I'd show you where it is or I tell you where it is and I tell you to research it. And I ask you guys to ask questions because I want you to know that I'm not up here feeling like I'm the dude on the, on the picture. 
I'm not feeling like I'm infallible or that I can't learn things. I love to learn. Veronica will tell you, I, I sit up there at that computer all day in a trance, learning, going from this to that, reading this, we're looking on the computer and reading a book at the same time because I'm cross-referencing something. I want to know because I love to live well. And so I know you can't do that with your emotions, your feelings, your opinions, your traditions, your customs. You can't do it. So I... I, I find the truth and I get on the side of that because I know once I find the truth that I don't have to defend it, justify it. It'll stand on its own. And when people ask me, it does, I don't take it offensively because I know people want to know. I want to know. I wanted to know. And so if you have that truth, then you'll be able to say it and it will stand. Like I said before, the truth is incontrovertible. Malice may attack it. Ignorance may deride it. But at the end, it will stand. If it's a truth, it's going to stand no matter what cross-examination may come, whatever light may be shed on it. But that's what people should do. If more people did that, and last thing I'll say to your point, if more people do that, they wouldn't be in the point, the place they are. But most people don't do that. They only do it when they don't want to do something. People want proof, but only when they want proof. Now, how many of us have went to a job and worked two weeks before we got our first check? Anybody ever done that? Hello. Okay. But what proof did you have that they were going to pay you? How do you know for sure they weren't going to go out of business? You didn't have no proof then. What proof did you have that everything you look on that bottle is actually in there? Nothing more, nothing less. Anybody go home and have a scientific lab and pour their salad dressing out and make sure all the things are analyzed? Anybody do that? I heard Dick Gregory say one time, he said, well, when you're exercising, shouldn't you consult your doctor first? He said, when you started smoking crack, did you consult your doctor first? My point is, is that people, everybody, my point is that it's okay to question, but my point is people pick and choose is my point. People are, are only picking and choosing because they don't really want to do something. So when you talk about an assumption and it makes out of uh, this out of you and me, no, they're picking and choosing. We assume all the time. We do it every day and almost everything. You're in your car on the freeway. You're assuming nobody going to hit you and they're going 90 miles an hour right next to you. And all you got is some skinny little lines to protect you from them. But we're assuming we're going to be okay. Otherwise we wouldn't go on there, would we? We're assuming we're this. We assume we're going to make it from an airplane. We're How many times you say, I'm going to see you tomorrow? Based on what? How you know you're going to wake up? How you know they're going to wake up? How you? We, we assume all the time is my point. But we pick and choose when that is valid or not. And you can't do that if you're telling the truth. You have to understand that that's a natural function. And now you get to choose how you make it work for you now. Instead of it consciously, not just unconsciously. Right? So absolutely. Yes, question. George. Uh, it wasn't really a question. It was just to go off of what you teach us. You said it last week uh, to Sparkle and just to, to go with what she was asking was, you know, when when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Mm -hmm. like you can't you can tell people the right way to do things and what you learn from your research of years and years and years. But until they're ready to, to actually say, you know what, I tried enough on my own. I'm going to go ahead and just listen to what you're saying now. You just have to keep walking in it like, you know, like, you know, they're going to. You should know, you should have expectation that you know they're going to come along. So as long as you keep walking in it, walk, walking in it, like I, I see it with my kids all the time. It was times where I was really down, but I kept walking with the faith that everything going to be all right. And I could just see it in my kids that, you know, they didn't even know what was going on. But sooner or later, they were like, you know what, maybe I need to read books like dad read books because he read them all the time. You know, it, it's just that you just have to be kind of like, I can't, I don't even know the word to describe it. You have to just walk in it and just say, hey. I'm gonna do what I know is right because we don't. We still don't know. The more that you learn, the, the more you know you don't know everything. Exactly. So, <laughs> yes. So it's like you know, it's just to keep walking in it, and eventually, it, it, it can be frustrating sometimes. But eventually, if they're gonna learn, they're gonna come to you and they're gonna ask you, "Okay, I know, Mom, you've been trying to teach me for so long. I know, I know your sister's been trying to teach me for so long. I'm ready now." Until then, you just keep walking in that faith and walking in that light that you you know that you know is right or what you think is right. Mm -hmm. Now that's absolutely right. And last thing I'll say that kind of dovetails or that kind of connects both of what you're saying is we're under the assumption that we have to be here to save people. We got here just like everybody else. Oh, well, why? I mean, not, did, were we, were we immaculately concepted in the sense of like, did we come here to be everybody's salvation? Like we came here so different that we are already ahead of the game. No, we didn't. So we didn't come here to save everyone else. We can try to save who we like or who we want, but that's not really what we're here for. And all it does is exhaust you. Right. Because most of the time it just makes you weary and well doing because people, to George's point, they're not ready to listen when they're not. And Veronica will tell you, I love to help people, but I I will I will stop talking in a minute. Boy, I will shut it off like a like a like a late utility bill. Well, it'll get shut off and be so dark so fast. You will never thought there was light in the room. Yes, I, I will stop quick. Once I know you're not listening, I stop because 
because I'm, I'll say it this way, from, I, because I know I'm right. I'm not talking to you if I'm not. I know I'm right. There's not opinion. This is not a difference of opinion. We can't agree to disagree on what's right or wrong. We can disagree to, or, or agree to disagree if we both have an opinion, but not when there's truth or not, fact or not, right? So, so we're not here to be that for everyone. If if when you are to George's point, when you are living your best life, people see it. Now people do different things with it. Some people are mad at you over it. Some people hate on you for it. Some people try to do this or do that. But that's just their own process of trying to find their own light. Like when everybody's sleeping, you turn the light on. Some people moan. Some people roll over. Some people put the covers over their head, right? Some people get up right away and stagger around. Some people sit up and just get themselves together. Everybody does something different when they encounter light, right? Metaphor for truth. When they, when they encounter that truth, that esoteric truth. Everybody does something different with it, right? But they see it. So whatever they do with it is on them. But the fact that you're shining, you they but they're up. They saw it. Now, sometimes people come around a little later, sometimes, but you just keep walking, like George said, like all of us, just keep walking, keep doing what you do. People see it. People hear it, right? People, but they, they will come around their own time and they have a right to do that because I didn't want to hear this stuff 10 years ago, 15 years ago. I didn't want to go to church. My mom was dragging us out of bed. We faked every convulsion and medical illness you could get. And it didn't matter. Right. Uh, so we didn't always want to hear all this stuff. None of us did. But now we're awake and we want to hear it. And everybody else has a right to stay asleep for as long as they want, just like we did. Right. But if you keep walking, like George said, all of us, if we keep walking, people will see it. And there's nothing better than an example. It's just the most powerful thing in the world. There's nothing better than an example. Right. So that's awesome. OK. Um, is there anything else I want to. Uh, oh, OK. Let me say this real quick. A party. When, when, when you have a party, who do you invite? Who I want. Okay, so you invite who you want. Okay, who is who is who you want? What is that based on? Um, Sparkle Bailey put people we want to celebrate with us. Okay, so you people, people to celebrate. So if the people you okay, say it again. Safe with. Feel safe with. So the people you celebrate and feel safe with, what? Why is that? What is that based on? Relationship. Okay, the relationship. Perfect. So you're saying the relationship is good then. Mm -hmm. Now be careful because you. I'm just walking you guys into a cold. I'm just walking you guys all right in it's here. A trap. Oh, that's all the way at track. I know oh, it's all a trap. The way at track. Uh, I love it. It's wonderful. All right. So, okay. So who are the people that you don't invite? The ones we don't like or don't know. You don't like them. Okay. Stella put haters. Haters. Okay. <laughs> Anybody, anything else? One more. At least one more. People you don't like. Haters. Party poopers. Party poopers. Okay, think people that'll get you down, right? Yeah. Downers. All right. Like minded. For the invite. For the invite. Okay. Like minded. Oh man, you guys, you guys are gonna be mad. You stop. You gonna mad you said something this time. Okay. So this is this is the part. All right. What's another word? This class, this class. In this class, what's another word for party? Gathering. Gathering. Okay. Yeah, but this class. Think about this class. The party. Okay. Mastermind. Okay. What's another word for party? For this class. Okay. A good time learning. I'll Group. All right. What do we talk about here? Consciousness. Okay. Because consciousness is the creator of what? Reality. Of reality. Your reality you call what? Life. 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 The party is your life. Now, has anybody ever seen... Um, has anybody ever heard me say, no man comes to me unless my father in me calls him? Has anybody ever heard me say that? 
Yes. No, no man comes to me unless my father in me calls. No man. That means it is no man means no thing, no external thing comes to me unless my father in me calls him. So no external thing comes to me, my life, unless my father, which is I am, calls it. So I am is calling all the physical things in your life according to your life. Your life is who is the governor of your life, of your physical world? Who is the governor of your life? I am. Who is that? God. Who is that? What is that? My mind. Your consciousness. What you are aware of being. What did Jesus always say? I and my father are one. The physical world and my consciousness are one. So guess what? Your life is the party. So you got to think at, now you got to think about who's in it. What's in it? Is it who you want? Is it like, because guess what? If there's people in there that you don't like, that are consistent, not people you walk across in the mall. I'm talking about people that you stop, hold, hug, call, that you have a relationship with. If there's people in there that you don't like, if there's haters and if there's all these other things, guess what they are? Somebody used the word. I think it was Karen used the word. Guess what they are? Like-minded. There are people that have an association with you. There's something in you that is in them. You're like-minded. That's why they're at the party. That's why they're in your life. I'm talking about extensively. I'm not talking about that you cross paths with. I'm not talking about that you just... No, I'm talking about the people that you call, that you use on a regular basis. These are like-minded people. You may not like, you may not like their mind, but they're like-minded. That's why they're there. Your, your consciousness is always drawing to you the physical expression of itself. What you want to do now is to make your consciousness to the point where you're drawing who you want, people to celebrate, people that you feel safe with, people that you have good relationships with, but you can have a relationship with somebody and not be any good. Still a relationship. A hater is still a relationship. A party, people, a party pooper, they're still at your party though. They're, they're at your party. though, And the people who wrote this book are trying to tell you when it says, no man comes to me unless my father in me calls him. No external thing happens in, at your party unless your consciousness called him. Nobody came in your party and just busted in the door. You invited him. Whether you did it on purpose or not. Because consciousness is, uh, your unconscious is what you're unaware of, but it's still conscious. It's just sub, it's un, you don't see it but it's still part of your consciousness. Your consciousness is what you are thinking and what you mean, but sub still is consciousness. So there's things that you're doing that you mean, and there's things that you're doing that you don't know you mean, or you don't realize you're doing. It's still part of your consciousness. And there's no way that person get into your party without you, into your life without you. There's no way they get there or stay there without you. So if you want to change who's in your party, you have to change who you're inviting. But who invited them? You. Who is you? I am. Who is I am? Consciousness. You have to change your consciousness. If you change your mind, you'll change who you invite. If you no longer do that, anybody have friends that they grew up with that they don't hang out with anymore? Anybody have friends that when you were young, you swore this was your homie? And they were. You swore this was your homie. And you guys, you can remember all the things you used to do. But if you see them now, you're like, <laughs> You didn't drop low like you in the army. You didn't went for standing up, walking the mall. To, you got on your face and everything. Things are different. Things have changed. People that you swore you couldn't live without, now you can't stand to see anywhere in your vicinity. Things have changed. Your in your invitation list has changed. But you are the you are the you are the the inviter. You're the person inviting everyone in your life by your consciousness, by what you believe yourself to be. You need a physical expression. The world is a mirror. It is a physical expression of what you're believing yourself to be. 
It doesn't pick the outfit that you put on. It just reflects back what you put on. It doesn't pick the people you hang out with. It just reflects back the physical expression of your consciousness. Your consciousness picks the people. Because I'm this, I, these are the type of people I hang out with. Because I'm this, I don't hang out with these people. They're physical expressions of your consciousness. You're trying to change the physical expression while keeping your same mind. That's literally like I was telling somebody yesterday, if you bought vanilla ice cream every day, a scoop of vanilla ice cream, how long would it take for vanilla to taste like chocolate? <laughs> it's never, right? So then how do you think you're gonna change your life with the same idea? Every day you talk about your back hurt and wonder when it's gonna stop hurting. Every day you talk about you hate your job and wonder when you're going to like it. Every day you say you broke and wonder when you're going to be rich. Mm -hmm. Every day you say you're sick and it's, you got that cold because, you know, everybody in your family got it around this time of the year. And you, how many times, how long are you going to keep the same thought and think you're going to get a different outcome? Mm -hmm. How do you think like, well, if I just keep thinking for two years in a row, this flu will turn into uh, something else. It'll turn into great health. Right? It won't, it doesn't work like that. Everyone in your life physically that you have a real physical interaction regularly, not people you cross, not people you, but I'm talking about the people you have a relationship with. The closer they are to you, the more like you they are. Some aspect of them. Not them, they don't look like you, they may not talk like you, they may not, but there's an aspect of them that is like-minded. That's the only way they're there. Your consciousness is always calling the physical expression of itself. It's like a mirror is letting you know what you're wearing. It's letting you know what you're thinking, what you're believing to be true. And sometimes just think of, just think about that. Okay. In your world, that may suck, but just think about if you try to get dressed and you had no mirror, just think if you could never look in a mirror ever, but you got to get dressed every day and how you look is important. Imagine if you never had a mirror. Your life is a mirror. It's not there to judge what you put on. It's just showing you what you put on. And it's there for you to figure out, do you still want to do that? There's no one in your life to, with any real presence at all. It's, with really hardly any presence at all without your consciousness calling it. It's the only reason you're at the mall right now. It's only because you constantly, you went to the mall. It's the only reason you're here. It's the only reason they're there. You're like-minded. You both are at the mall, aren't you? You ain't all that different, no matter if they look like they're 700 pounds and you're two pounds. If they're 80 and you're five, you're both at the mall, aren't you? You're both, so there's some form of that. And you have to figure out for yourself, hey, let me make sure my, my list of invitees are good. Because this cat over here is always starting to fight. Always starting to fight. This girl over here, if she drinks too much, in about 10 minutes, is going to be on up in here. This person's always, right? You have to look at who you're inviting because that's going to dictate your time. And there's no one in your life that you're not inviting according to your consciousness. Your consciousness is always inviting the physical things into your world. Situations, people, circumstances, conditions, all those things are reflections of your consciousness. And if you want those things in your physical world to change, you have to first change your consciousness. Be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. A new mind gives you a new life. Not new effort, not new weights, not new jobs, not new friends. You'll get the same outcomes with the same mind. No matter how many different ice cream parlors you go to, vanilla is vanilla. It's never going to be chocolate. You have to understand that. You don't get to manipulate that. All right. Well, it's a little after nine, so I'll stop now. But I wanted to leave you with that. You can change anything in your world. You can change any physical thing in your world if you're willing to change yourself. And changing yourself is changing not your physical self, it's changing your psychological self, your, your psychology, your mind, your mentality, your collection of thoughts, feelings, and beliefs. Your thoughts, feelings, and beliefs make up what you call your mind. And your mind actively is your consciousness. If you change your collection of thoughts, feelings, and beliefs, you will change your physical expression, meaning that your physical world that you are in. That physical world could be your health, your wealth, your friends, your job, how hard life is, how easy life is, you can change any physical thing by first changing your mind, by first changing your concept of it and you. Changing the physical world by changing physical things is like changing it, trying to trying to change effect, trying to trying to change effect with effect. Only cause changes effect because only cause creates effect. You have to go to the first cause, which is your mind, your thoughts, feelings, and beliefs right? Your assumptions, which you're accepting and assuming to be so. Change that and that's, you're going to get a change in your physical world. All right. 
before I let you all go, does anybody have anything they want to say? Any questions they want to ask or anything like that before I let you get out of here? Stella have put in the chat, an idea can change anything. An idea creates everything. It, doesn't, it can't change anything. It does create anything. It is the only way anything comes. That's why everybody has ideas. That's why you have no choice. You don't have to work for ideas. You just, if you just sit down and be quiet, you'll see a whole bunch of ideas have been trying to come, but you're blocking them off because you're distracted all the time. That's why they create social media and TV and programming. It's to stop you from thinking for yourself and allowing them to think for you. In you. you then you think it's your idea, but it's not. It's just their idea in your body and in your mind. Malta, thank you so much for your knowledge and time. It's my honor and pleasure. Thank you all for coming. It's always an honor and pleasure. Like I said, I'm not the dude. Nobody up here is lifting me up. Nobody is below me. We're all on the same level playing field as far as who we are. And the goal is to remember we all have the same potential, but then you have to choose how you perform. You have to choose, Are you? do you want to be God or man? Do you want to handle it like a God or do you want to handle it like a human? You can, you can choose. We all have the same abilities, the same, as far as the same power. How we use it is based on our individual identities. But we all have the same ability to do because it's psychological, it's not physical. So you get to choose what that is every single day, right? So I'm up here running my mouth, but I am not up there. I'm with you as far as in, we're here. But but now we have to perform. Now everybody gets to choose where they are in performance, not potential, right? So I'm always honored and, and, and it's a privilege to be able to come together each, each weekend with you all and reason, laugh, talk, learn, grow, and lastly, apply. None of this does any good to just hear it. Just because you heard it, just because you memorize it, because you can recite it, doesn't mean you know it. You don't know it until you apply it. Until you say, I have done that. I'm a doer of the word, not a hearer only. You will deceive yourself thinking because you heard something and you can repeat it that you know it. I've known a lot of pregnant women in my life. That didn't make me. That didn't do nothing for me. That, that don't give me that experience. I can't, I don't know it. Just because I know about it or I know of it. I know Michael Jordan. I can't call him. I know of him. I don't know him. I don't have the experience. So what we talk about here is to give you access to the experience, but you got to step in it now. And you have to live it. You have to apply what you've heard in whatever area of your life and whatever ways resonate with you. But that is how you grow. That's how you start walking on the water. That's how you start turning water into wine. That's how you start literally ex experiencing and expressing the life that you want and realizing you choose that and not allowing anyone to choose it for you, right? So, all right. Well, hey, thank you all. We appreciate it. Have a great week, great weekend. And uh, we'll see you next weekend. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all so much. Coming. Bye, guys. Bye.